Hey there folks, Rinium T here and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 14 and Walker. In the last part, we saw Alpha! Yay! And I guess we also made it to Ultima Thule, lost Thancred, found some dragons, found an A rank, killed A said A rank. And yeah, we're going to find the source of the dragon's woes because we're just trying to figure things out here and find. I guess he's all around us. Anyways. Um, we want to... Hello! So this, speaking of hunts, this is one of the B ranks of this area. Level cheater. They led you here as well, did they? It was described to me as the source of their woes and proof of their end. I think I'm beginning to see why. It's a hatching ground, or was. I've seen similar on the Theros. My guard's form was kind, must once have lived and thrived in a place such as this. Rutra said his father was driven from the, their ancestral home by war and strife. This, then, is the fate of those who remained. Let's have a look around. Maybe those eggs have more to tell of what happened here. Inside the shadowed egg, you find the remains of an unborn dragon. The body has already begun to decompose. A gelatinous, half-dried membrane covering the corpse suggests it failed to emerge. A murky liquid is pulled inside this eggshell. The noxious failure is indi indicative of contamination. Gingerly lifting a large egg from the vicious mire, you peer inside and see a formless mass soaking in a pool of embryonic fluid. Your stomach turns as you return the egg to its resting place. The egg appears to have been broken from the inside out. Perhaps the dragon it was within succeeded in hatching. What's this? I thought all the eggs had been ruined. If the dragon egg was indeed hatched, there is no sign of it here. Or its sire, for that matter. We should look for them. We start with the cliff tops, and I'll search the plains. All right, to the north we go. Uh, someone doing baits. I should probably do baits in this area. Actually, yeah. I don't feel like it right now. <laughs> Alright, for the malformed dragon net. Boisterous howling hath been quieted by thy hand, I presume. Everything all right? I thought I heard a dragon or something resembling one. Ah, I see what's happened here. Was that your child? Perhaps some eggs within Nom Null are indeed mine. If life within one did quicken, the beast thou hast slain may be one of my blood. Yet I do not recognize it, twisted and malformed as it is. Not a dragon in truth, but a reminder of our failure. A testament to our shame. Explain. They descended from the heavens, cold, heartless machines, and with them rode war and death. With fire and fury, rage and rancor, we gave answer. It was a long and bloody battle, but only the beginning. 
Untold chaos and destruction swept over the star. In the end, the invaders were victorious. Yet when they looked upon their prize, they deemed it unfit for requisition. We were abandoned to our ruin. Survivors sought to put away their shame, to rebuild a futile effort. In purest soil, replete with ether, did we once cultivate our nesting ground, but our lands were barren, and the eggs nurtured in such desolation were faded to rot. What few survived to hatch emerges abominations. We shall have no new progeny. But there are dragons among you capable of journeying to other stars. That there are, many would make the attempt, each bearing a clutch of eggs. The richest stars were home to the harshest rulers and the arrival of dragons inside the contest for supremacy. When the fires faded, the wars lost in one, they too were reduced to ash and waste. Tis the curse of those who seek life, to be drawn into conflict, to conquer or be conquered. A vicious cycle we now choose to break. We tire of conflict. Of everything. We wait now in sweet and merciful silence. Free from strife and suffering. Still a stone. Wait, you claim your kind is doomed, but there is another star. of will. <coughs> they want only the brood in silence to be left alone with their grief until time itself comes to an end. The soul reward for senseless bloodshed, a pain I understand, and wish that I did not. What fools we were. But now wasn't the time for such thoughts. The others will want to hear what we've learned. Come. means we're not walking. Were you able to establish any meaningful contact with the dragons? They wish to escape what they perceive to be a cycle of conflict. Thank you, Arya. Hestinian. As for our part, I believe we are more acutely aware of our confines than before. We started by traversing the perimeter of the island to see if there might be a path leading off of it. Sadly, there was nothing to be found. There's not a small amount of debris floating about. Could there not be enough to serve as a bridge to lead us elsewhere? I could stir that, and so I tried throwing a stone onto a potential platform to judge its integrity, but never reached its mark. As it crossed an invisible threshold just beyond the boundaries of this island, it vanished, and it reappear above me and fall at my feet. I would not be too quick to presume that what we see outside this space is as it appears. Which is why I returned to the Ragnarok and asked for the Lockworth to search for a potential path. However, the ship's instruments fail to provide conclusive data on the surrounding area, until we know more, I think it's too risky to attempt flying to another island. What Medion told us before, that emotions dictate reality here, might be the key. But I'm not entirely sure what emotion might manifest a bridge to lead us to safety. So what we're saying is, we've no way forward. At present, I. If it is indeed a motion that governs this island, perhaps it's not Medeons, but the dragons that holds us here. They tire of conflict, and have chosen the path of oblivion to escape it. Rather, they have chosen no path at all, meaning there is no way for the dragons or anyone here on this island to advance. The sound theory, disheartening though it may be, 
that is the case, what recourse do we have? They are not like to be persuaded to help us. The reasoning is built on the history of turmoil and strife. Without irrefutable proof, the future is not as bleak as they believe it to be. Mayhap persuasion is not the answer. Media bit to uh, make us then and there on the Ragnarok, and she would have been su succeed if not for Thancris' determination. She can see that it was strong enough to overpower the despair that otherwise rules ultimate will and reshape it to a degree. Perhaps it can be done again in like manner by overpowering the prevailing emotions. Twas ultimate will's architect, Medion herself, against whom Thancra did pit himself in a clash of wills. Though I had marked no leader among them, as such, I did chance to encounter a dragon possessed of despair far more potent than most. Potent enough may have to dictate the course of for others, and thus their domain to follow. He spoke but few words, carefully chosen, her tone and timber alone threatening to rend my heart in twain. Challenging his desire to remain may allow us to alter the island upon which we stand. Last I fear by Walter Brederick, a veil be not against his calcifying heart. But may have one of you will fare better. And I shall guide thee. Alan, they call him in the dragon tongue. Thou wilt find him nearby, eyes fixed upon the water. Well, what, what, what have we to lose? Let's get going. He remaineth as he was when I first approached, entombed in melancholy. I see. Perhaps I could... I'll handle this. So... Waiting to die like all the others, are you? So you say. Yet your kind has found a new beginning on our star. One of you braved the expanse, bearing with him a clutch of eggs. They and their children now rule our skies, their song heard by all.
They suffered much and repaid their suffering in kind. Had your brethren made the self-same choice, my family might still be alive. Yet lasting peace does not come to those who simply retreat from conflict. No, you must be willing to confront it, to stare into the face of your foe and see yourself in him. Only then, can you break the cycle of torment and tragedy? This lesson, a dear friend taught me at the risk of his life. There is no nobility in your penance. You wallow in self-pity. And after everything we've endured, we will not let you stop us. Stay back! Not Estinian too! There's a wind! He's opened the way for us. Sacrificed himself to remake this place, like Thancred did. <laughs> oh, Alphano. <sighs> Come, let us follow the wind. It will not lead us astray. He would not. Oh, oh, 
Oh, beep, beep, beep. Oh, come on. Ostracon Deca Octo. This sector is a recreation of the 18th civilization encountered by Medion and her sisters. Ruined and desolate, the world it represents was once the abode of a proud race of dragons who were driven to extinction in a titanic struggle against mechanical invaders from the Alphatron star. Look there, the wind. This is Astinian's doing, I'm sure of it. We should ride its flow and see where it leads. Half a gale celebrated you to another island. The other sounds should arrive before long. He did it. He found a way forward for us. The dragons remain trapped within the prison of their own making, lamenting the horrors of war. Yes, did he knew them better than most. He was a man of honor and a dear friend, willing to fight to the very end for what he believed was right. He's still fighting Alpha now, just like Thancred. Their sacrifices are why we can survive here, but we still have a chance to stop her. Even in spirit, they're unwilling to give in to despair, and we mustn't either. Alize is right. We must press on, for their sake. Paved on sacrifice? Roads paved within sacrifice, I think. Something like that. As Ashul and Alice said, we must continue. Hmm, there was a change in our surroundings. Perhaps this is the memory of an altogether different world. So it would be prudent to learn more of it then. Try carefully, lest we lose our footing in the sand. Tigers up. Um, yeah, we'll go. I'll just get back up here. Bring it position on Tiger. Yeah, I'll just go. Got the right side. You fancy that. So, I don't remember if I've shown this S rank or not. So, taking a little break from uh, the depressing mood of Ultima Thule, we will have. Sometime. There it is. Way down here. We have Tiger! This Tiger is the S rank of Lakeland. Uh, you spawn Tiger by discarding a rail tenderloin. These can either be bought with gems once you 
get high enough rank in every area via fates, or you can skill rail dodos in Kalusha, or you can spy on Markaborn, of course. I usually, if I ever want to farm it, I will just go kill the dodos. It's not too, too bad of a drop right anyway. Um, yeah. Fortunately, Lamia's Garlemald uh, ass rank is also up at the same time. But I guess we're gonna do that. Right, I always forget I actually have to hit. Okay, let's get out. Because I do not like messing with Tiger. Um, and. Alright, really? Am I doing this? So it's gonna do Rams and Dragon's Breath, uh, freezes you and paralyzes you. Really, really long range on Tiger. Um, basically, it's a beefy Camara, right? Uh, it has Poison Sting, which will ba pretty much one shot any level 80 if you hit, get hit from it, so you don't really want to stand behind. Lion's Breath, the same thing. Uh, level 90, so you're still gonna take a buttload of damage. Person is like cutting around. I'm gonna get hit if they keep this up. So, yeah, Lion's Breath, you don't be in front. Scorpion Scene, don't wanna be in back. I guess I would really keep Tiger still. Tiger has too much other nonsense. Rams and Dra Dragon's Voice, same thing as regular. In and out, but you can silence them. There's that Dragon's Breath. Um, there's like a, if you stand kind of on his, like, hind leg here, you can avoid the tail and the breaths, but it's a pain in the butt. I really hope SS rank is not incoming. I would like to get back to Ultimate Wool. Thank you. And... No minions. Back we go. Anyway, were it not for the violet crystal embedded in its surface, it would appear as ordinary stone. Curious script has hath been etched upon them. Alas, it is not a language with which I am familiar. Can't say I recognize it either. Nor I. The dragons, from what I recall, preserve their knowledge in song and eschew the written word entirely, so we may assume that this is the work of another race, one we have yet to encounter. Medion claimed the dragons would su uh, world suffer the slow death, seeking the release of oblivion. What life we find here, like as not, doth wend its way towards a similar end. Hmm. What do you suppose that is over there? I'm not sure. It's hard to make out this from this distance, but its surface seems to bear the same crystals as this mon monument. Meaning there's a chance we may find whoever built them both. We should go and have a look. Come. We got 83 north. Boom. So yeah, there was zero ether currents on the first island. So expect quite a few to pop up here. Not even hard to find places. I guess kind of the same similar vein as Azus Law. Like, you need flight to really do anything here, so. And there's 16 southeast. Oh gosh, I feel like this one. Oh, well, I have to go over here anyway, so. Why do I always do that? So, oh god, the rain's up here! Hold up. Oh, for fruit's sake! Tart is up. All right. 
they could just chill on Spawny Fan for stuff for a minute. That'd be great. Oh god, it got early pulled too. This better have been worth it! is the S rank of Amarang. Mm, yep, so this is Tartia. Tartia is the S rank here. Uh, spawn Tartia, you need to be a blue mage. You need to use the spell self-destruct on the spawn point. Um, Shadowbringers was the first expansion after Blue was introduced, so they're like, let's have a hunt related to Blue Mage. So that was Tarsia. Something about like loud explosions wakes him up when he's first spawns. He'll be asleep. I punched him right. Yeah, no, I'm in combo. Okay, we're fine. I'm He's too much of trouncy, so it's gonna do a bunch of trounces, it's gonna kinda of spin all over the place, and basically death if you get hit. We can watch these people kinda of just die here or take a buttload of damage. Yeah, I see some die. And yeah. And look if you're a tank. Uh, mighty spin, it does a forest fire, which is proximity. It does a uh, Falcon Mizzle, which is misdirection, it's always compiled either the in or out. Groundstorm is the in. You can obviously also do out because it does have a max range on it. And it's always going to follow that by a um, another mighty spin. Anyway. Fruit, fruity, fruit, fruit cake. So these are the air. Uh, it's very important that we do this now because these are the air. The Ezra just bought. Oh, where is it? Gosh, fruit and fruit, fruit, fruit and fruit cake. It's down there too. Oh, so these are the air. Very important. Let's get back down there. Of course it's already pulled because of course it is and people are dotting it which means it won't reset so it won't. So to spawn the S rank of this area, Narrow Rift, you need 10 of the Wii A minions. There he is. Um, yes, you need 10 of them. So you need 10 people to attempt to spawn this S rank. This, this is why I wanted to wait for this thing to spawn. This is why I was like, those are the air. <laughs> By the way, this is narrow route. <sighs> Did 
doing this on reset night was a mistake. Or on big S rank spawn night after reset. Uh. Alright, so yeah, this is Nero Rift. This is the big boy of the Aya. Also the S rank of Ultima Thule. We are gonna run way the heck out here. So it's gonna do empty promise, empty promise, which is gonna be out and then in, or way out, as I like to do it. Um, so yeah, you need 10 Lee minions to spawn this, which you get by, I think it's hitting rank two phase, or is it max rank phase? I don't remember. It's for the phase in Ultimate Wool. Um, yeah. This is why I was really not wanting this one to spawn yet, because I wanted to actually make it to the air. I kinda did. <laughs> sort of. Barely. Um, we at least saw them. Uh, yeah. With this needing 10, you do need 10 people, which means any, whenever you spawn it, he will automatically be aggroed onto someone from that group. I have died horribly and then been ignored because my body was way out in the middle of nowhere. I was going to scream with minion spawned. And, yeah. Um, so that's why you always want to hope try and get him reset after a spawn, because, well, he's going to be aggro once he spawns. And, yeah, I guess that's our first Endwalker S rank. Um, all the ones, it's the ultimate little one. Now, if we could just get some spare time here to not have Fanfret S rings happen, I'd like to continue onwards. And... Yeah. So here's the baby A's. Not the wheat A's, but the, you know, normal ones. Let's pick with this ghostly figure. Hail, travelers, this is the most unexpected occurrence. Oh, um, hello there. Is this your home? Indeed it is. Ah, oh, forgive me. I have forgotten. An exchange of introductions is expected when first meeting those with whom one is unacquainted. When the vibration of the vocal folds was still required to convey our thoughts and intention, Aya, I believe, was the pronunciation used when referring to our people. Though it is not entirely applicable given our present state, you are welcome to use this application. As for nomenclature to address my individual person, I believe it will be pronounced Kofkud. Yes, Kofkud of the Aya. We have encountered beings that communicate intermittently through thought, but never one that is wholly without voice. I presume we are having this conversation via the medium of ether, or dynamis, as the space is fused with vast quantities of it, and fascinating in either case. I gather your response to my presence is positive, then. That is well, for there is something I wish to ask of you. Like yourselves, we Aya are ether-based life forms. Therefore, it may be surmised that your bodies are of comparable biological composition to those we once possessed. I have a number of queries regarding your subjective perception of the five senses. Sight, sound, taste, touch, and smell. In total, I prepared 198,712,180,812.27. Er, that's rather a lot, isn't it? Ah, my apologies. I have omitted a great many details necessary to understand the nature of my request. Though we dispense of our, with our corporeal vessels long ago, we have rediscovered a need for the flesh and have endeavored to recreate our erstwhile forms. However, all pertinent records have been lost due to the passage of time. Take, for example, the nervous system. It is well within our power to recreate but we have no frame of reference for sensations once experienced by our people, which may compromise is our ability to interact with our physical environment. 
and the reason you need to regain corporeal forms. Also, apparently, um, Kaiser Behemoth is up on Pamphret. <laughs> Why? To bring an end to our existence, of course. Though need is perhaps too strong a word, it would be a simple matter to unmake ourselves through an use of etheric exsanguinators, but such a death seems inadequate. The traditionalists among us believe proper death requires an inescapable sense of impermanence in one's final moments, an experience found only with bodies of flesh. We should very much like to hear more of your plans. In exchange, we will answer any questions you may have to the best of our ability. Hmm. Such an exchange of information would indeed prove useful. Very well. To ensure eff efficacious exchange, I hereby invite you to our home. Yes, the abode of the Aya, where we traditionalists prepare for our demise. I presume your consent to answer questions is indicative of a tacit approval of our plans, in which case your cooperation is greatly appreciated. I must caution you, however, to be mindful of the Aya wandering the desert. Their desire for bodies of flesh could be described as overzealous. Now, if you would follow me... Like, that's a really, really big one we just killed. This is going rather smoothly, not that I'm complaining, mind. Even so, we mustn't forget their aim is oblivion, much like the dragons. Though I fail to see why a civilization so seemingly advanced would choose to unmake all they have created. At any rate, we will find no answers down in here. Let's be on our way. Six northwest. Beep beep. The minions. Those are FF eleven enemies. So one. If I remember right, it's on the other side of this. That worked better in my head. narrow rift it actually took the community quite a while to figure out how to spawn it because I mean it was available from the start the only ones that weren't available from the start were a labyrinthos and Thavnir. um they came in like patch 6.05 or something like that um but yeah it was like people couldn't quite understand what the clue meant I was like looking at all the different languages even though I vaguely know French and obviously know English and I'm like here looking through it all and that's further than we need to go so we're not gonna worry about that one yet and I'm just here like it's mentioning like little ones and all that and like little ones gathering or something like that but I couldn't re figure out what exactly it meant and I'm like is there a minion and it's like oh no we've tried it we've tried it but it's like gathering 10 was finally coming upon us realization you need 10 of the minion to spawn it welcome to our abode most of our compeers you will find remain idle in their domiciles though your quizzical expressions indicate my phrasing is unclear i speak of course of the violet crystalline constructs hanging from the stone sculpture structures there you say they remain idle but what of your work to regain corporeal bodies an astute question and understandable given your finite nature we have no desire to pursue our research, for it is no longer necessary. If, in our idleness, we are struck by sudden inspiration, we rise to pursue said inspiration to its conclusion. That is why I was present for your arrival, and why I continue to engage with you still. But while the others are not currently in a motile state, rest assured they will not object were you to disturb their respite. You need only cast your thoughts towards one of their crystalline domiciles to communicate.
But yeah, it was like once it was figured out how you spawn narrow rift, you just like on anything for tracking, whatever you just saw. Narrow rift, narrow rift, narrow rift, narrow rift, narrow rift. Because there was three instances of the area at the time. And <laughs> you catch your thought towards the crystalline non-missile, but there's no response. And yeah, so like they were all just spawning, you know, like all eight or whatever servers. At least there's eight on primal. And all three instances, so you'd have back to back to back, because all the windows were capped because, well, no one had been spawning them, no one had figured out how to spawn it. Uh, Spatika of Thavnir kind of had a similar thing happen with it, but, I mean, obviously it was delayed. You, you wish to speak? Very well. Pray a moment, if you would. And that it was just unclear how you do it. They were like, okay, it's clearly related to killing something. Is it killing enemies? Which would suck because it would be the second mass kill of the expansion with uh, Ruminator of Maori Lamentorum being the other one. And it ended up being that. Is it kill fates? Does it do what? Does it do maps? Because we haven't had a map related one in since, like, Heaven's Word, that being Pale Rider. And, yeah, no, it ended up being the kill, mass kill, which sucks, which cause means Endwalker has two mass kill ones. Between Ruminator and Svetika. Why, Seeker, and you ask, if you wish to know, I will tell you. Just a moment, I must remember. What form did I take when last I emerged? I mean, Burfler had sort of a similar thing. They were like... Like, what do they mean when the, like, the littles come out to play in the day? Like, okay, it's clearly ready to day. I guess it's really the sunshine. But they were like, oh, yeah, the tiny troll minion that you get from Aishascope. Ugh. Scrooge Million comes and goes, but soon fades into silence. Oh, come on! I'm just trying to auto-run, and I run into a pole. Did your inquiries yield satisfactory responses? I totally call this voice, whatever. I see. If they fail to answer, then it is likely because their minds have unraveled due to prolonged idleness. They are not the concentrated ether now. Worry not, there are no others who have need of those lodgings. They will not prove a hindrance to remain as they are. But more importantly, you said some few did answer your request for an audience. Yes, I imagine they will be with us ere long. Fresh abandon. We're just going with that, okay. No luck, but everyone else fared well enough. Quite a few Aya have awakened. Ah, there they are. May I introduce the La Luck, Du Dik, Nen Nench. Nen Nench? Nen Nench. It has been too long, Kuf Kuj. I dare say other four has been has since completed in orbit. Indeed, until the travelers brought it to my attention, I hadn't noticed how unraveled some had become. Travelers? Ah, of course, of course! The ones who wish to know why we seek to regain corporeal forms. The truth of the matter is as plain to see as the neighboring systems, but my single account would fail to satisfy the requirement for scientific scientific objectivity, thus did I bid them awaken you. Am I the one who struggles to tell who is speaking? Y yes! Nay, thou art not. In the absence of corporeal forms and the divergence they afford, may have such similarity in voices unavoidable. By the way, Kuf Kuj, have you already observed the requisite custom for the travelers? That which one is expected to do when receiving guests a manner of proper form. Ah, uh, yes, so long has it been, I had nearly, it had nearly escaped my mind, or completely escaped my mind, 
I still does. What was it again? I can't seem to remember. Neither do I. Pity. I was hoping you would. Perhaps we can search the archives for the answer. Come now, Nenij. The archives have long been frozen. Must we subject ourselves to further dolor? Surely you recall that much. Ah, uh, of course. Food. The custom is to serve food. Beings of flesh such as they are must regularly replenish their ether. By contributing to the replenishment, we communicate our friendly intention. That's right, that's right! We duly invite you to join us in communal repast, after which we may engage in leisurely conversation. If we have a chance to learn something, then I see no reason to decline. Excellent! If you would care to follow, we shall feast you on the purest ether! is where we replenish our ether. There is no particular name for it, but we traditionalists sometimes use the word restaurant. Now then, if you would take your place with your comrades, the space will soon be awash with purest ether. Please absorb as much as you like. Do I wait? No, we don't wait. We just go. We've had enough Ezra rank interruptions. You raised yourself for a rush of sweet, sweet ether, but nothing seems to happen. Perhaps you need to wait a little longer? You raised yourself again! But again, nothing seems to happen. Just as I had suspected, as meticulously as one might recreate the AI's home world, this is ultimate wool. One cannot simply generate ether here. As recreations, our friends are oblivious to this fact. To the very truth of their existence, much like the phantoms of the recreated Amarat. However appearances may seem, we must ever be mindful that it is the memories of the dead with whom we deal. Okay, didn't spawn. Anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. So, did you have your field of ether? Alas, we couldn't absorb it. A defic deficiency in our forms, it would seem. Oh, how very unfortunate. Might I ask how you normally replenish your ether? Through your mouths, you say. How very primitive and quaint. To think that their mouths serve not only to expel sound, but draw in sustenance besides. Such life forms have long since vanished from our systems. We regrettably cannot partake of your magnificent feast. Rest assured, we w feel your welcome most keenly. In, in the course of acquainting ourselves with your sophisticated ways, however, we cannot fail but wonder, wherefore do you wish to obtain vessels of flesh and thence to vanish? Will you not favor us with an explanation? Your flesh and blood, uh, you flesh and blood beings are always so hasty. It does have its charm, however. Very well, we shall indulge you. In the beginning, when the Aya yet possessed corporeal bodies, our ancestors dedicated themselves to the pursuit of knowledge and technological advancement. By transcending all limitations, we believed we would eliminate sorrow and abide in true happiness. From the tangible such as land to the intangible such as labor, there exist myriad hindrances to progress, but the most confining of all was the flesh itself. Our natural lifespan was distressingly middling, you see, too short to enjoy unhurried lives, yet too long to be considered disposable. Furthermore, to simply maintain the integrity of our bodies demanded considerable resources. But we managed to solve this problem. After long years, we discovered how to become non-corporeal entities with everlasting lives, untroubled by the failures of flesh. Thus changed, we had more time and freedom to continue our scientific pursuits. We went on to make ever greater strides in our quest to transcend all limitations until we finally decided to challenge the last of them all, 
The Limit of Knowledge. That is to say, deciphering the laws of creation. We sought to discover how the universe came into being and explain all extant phenomena and then predict the future. If we could but achieve this, we believe that we would be free from uncertainty and anxiety. And did you find the answers you sought? Yes, we did. Our efforts revealed to us a fundamental truth. Knowledge of said truth is essential for the continuation of our conversation. If you would learn more, we will share it with you. No, we mustn't. Primitive as they are, it would be unspeakably cruel to deprive them of their ignorance. They are possessed of corporeal forms. Their lives readily ended. As those who have gone before, is it not our duty to warn them? What thinkest thou? We have deliberated and come to a consensus. If you are resolved to know it, we will discuss, disclose to you the truth we discovered, the truth of the universe. Seek us at the stone pillars just outside the bounds of the abode, a place called Elegea. Fundamental truth. We will hear it, of course. Let's learn what has led such an enlightened people to this indolent end. Where's the side quest, though? Where knowledge leads. Ere we join the Aeon, there is one trifling matter I would fain investigate. Arya Grahatia, might I trouble you for your assistance? But of course. My thanks. We shall head outside the abode if you would kindly follow me. I know not what mischief you are plotting, Orianje, but I trust you have our best interests at heart. The rest of us shall go on ahead to Elegea. The rest of you worry, we won't start without you. I'm actually waiting for the side quest to appear because I know that there's some current ones in here. Way over there. I don't run it is. Okay, all the run is leading me off to a side. That's bad. This place shall serve. Is it the spring that you wish to investigate? Pray forgive me, my friends, but there is not to investigate. Twas but a pretense to speak in private. You have our undivided attention. As we've established here in Ultima Thule, those denizens of ruined stars are recreated in their twilight days. Yet one question doth arise in my mind. So faithfully formed are the simulacra, they believe themselves yet amongst the living. How dost thou suppose this is possible? Medion made contact with them while they still lived. Of course! 
perish. She must have visited the stars of the dragons in Aea before either race perished in their entirety. Thus could she make their emotions her own, and with them create more faithful simulacra than she had relied on any historical account. So too did I theorize, and upon that assumption, consider how those two races may have met their demise. According to the Iron Own Tale, Medion perceiveth the emotions of those nearby as her own, a high sense of empathy intrinsic to her nature as an intellecty. In the course of her star-faring journey, she encountered beings who strongly desired the cessation of their existence. She will be powerless before that desire. Even as she possesses the power to grant it, the power of Dynamis, tis my supposition that, overwhelmed by the longing for death, Medion did unleash Dynamis and usher the dragons and Aea unto their doom. Of course, such is not always the outcome. Full many stars did she find already lost to ruin. In order to greet a terminus, however, the fervent desire for the end is essential. Therefore, should you struggle to find the way forward, pray ask yourselves this. In the place where you stand, whose is a soul that yearneth most desperately for oblivion? Why do you tell us this now? Never again would I betray your trust. This pledge I did make to my comrades. In bringing thee into my confidence, I would remain true to my word. As for thee, let's consider it my fitting reward for the secrets I harbored for the Crystal Exarch. I once placed my faith in thy chosen path, walking at thy side full, knowing that we were bound for thy demise. I ask now that thou returnest the favor, and abide in faith as I fulfill mine own destiny. If you say my debt has come due, how am I to refuse? It is indelicate of me, I know full well, and I can but beg thy forgiveness. Yet even if I must needs go to such lengths, I cannot well feign ignorance of the answer I found within. The answer to the question, in what moment? Oh yeah, too much talking. What, what, in what moment might I stand strongest? After all that we've been through, I will say only this. Do what you must. Do what you must and see your conviction through. I shall, my friend. I shall. Without further ado, then, let's go to our go to join our comrades. Let's be off to Elegea. Okay, if you think I'm walking back there, no. Since everyone is accounted for, shall we then? Please continue. Tell us about this truth you discovered. Very well. Bear in mind, however, that the purpose of this conversation is not to impart scholarly knowledge. For such requires that you comprehend the subject matter, which you will not. We will forego the intricacies of our scientific methodology and deal only with the conclusion, the end of our society and our world. We acknowledge, with regret, 
that your star is in the midst of the same panic-induced cataclysm that befell Denet III. As such, in order to avoid causing undue distress, we will refrain from explicitly stating how much time you have remaining. You are entirely too kind. I pray you recount your tale as you see fit. In the beginning, the universe was but a tiny particle. Then suddenly, this particle began to expand. Having remained entirely in the bounds of your star, the phenomenon may be difficult for your kind to grasp. But this expansion has since continued unabated. Speculating that the universe could not grow indefinitely, we sought to learn what might occur and made a worrying discovery. The stars will continue to spread apart as will their finite thermal energies. Eventually, all heavenly bodies will grow cold and freeze. No new stars will be born, and the universe will enter into an eternal ice age. of proving that this determination was erroneous. We scrutinized our research from all angles, even as we sought to avert the everlasting winter. The endeavor proved fruitless. So infamously so, in fact, that it became synonymous with vain effort. The universe as we know it would end, and there is no way to prevent it. Beneath the weight of this knowledge, our society stagnated. Though we had time still, it was a cold comfort. Why strive for anything when desolation is assured? When our wealth of wisdom, accumulated since the dawning of our kind, would be forever lost. No civilization would rise from our ashes. No scholar recover our knowledge. In silence unbroken, naught would stir. Intellect was once our pride. Overnight, it became our shame. Our works, monuments to futility. Immortality, our greatest invention, became a source of suffering. Rather than suffer on, many chose to unmake themselves by means of etheric exsanguinators. Etched upon these stones are the testaments of such souls. Though many left no words at all, thinking it a pointless gesture. Once we have obtained vessels of flesh, we likewise intend to vanish. If you understand this, understand aught of our tale, you will abandon your quest for knowledge. Ignorance truly is bliss. If you would cling to your illusory happiness, remain primitive and pure. It is the only way. So, that's your story.
While I appreciate your advice, I will not heed it. Convinced though you may be of this truth, it is yours and not mine. Indeed, truth, I have ever believed, is in the eye of the beholder. Are you suggesting that we have reached a faulty conclusion? That our science failed us? Hardly. As you yourself said, the subject matter is beyond my comprehension. And that, I accept, is true. I do not possess the knowledge to prove or disprove your conclusion. In my mortal years, I doubt I could even approach the wisdom of the air. But of one thing am I absolutely certain. I would not be happier in ignorance. You stole a no! You mustn't! The most important lesson I've learned is that learning isn't simply passing one's eyes over words. Nay, it is when understood for oneself that knowledge attains its true value. This is what has sustained me, driven me onward in joy and wonder, in anger and sorrow. The universe may end, and all may be for naught, but I will live as I always have. I will always seek out new knowledge, and no conclusion of yours, no matter how grim, can dampen my desire. I suppose it is only to be expected. Their feeble minds cannot fathom the terrifying gravity of it all. But worry not. We consider it our duty to enlighten you. And we will not stop until you grasp the full extent of our despair. will soon dissipate. There may be a way to restore it. Asim's magic. So long as our souls remain, you can use it to summon us back. But you mustn't, for it would mean losing our way forward. This I only reveal so that you can promise not to invoke the magic. We came here knowing what victory may cost, so press on. Press on, and do not look back. I shall join thee. As subterfuge is not required, thou shalt not suffer for mine absence. Briange. My resolve hath never been as strong as thine. Full oft have I wavered in my decisions, and afterwards been stricken with regret. In spite of this, I may still stand with my comrades, supporting them as they attempt the greatest of feats. This truth I have learned in the course of our journey. And many though my shortcomings may be, I may also claim to excel in prophecies. My studies, into which have granted me the flexibility of mind needed to bend this malleable reality. Thus shall I hope that thou mayest have the strength to resist and our comrades the strength to continue. With you to urge us on, how could we possibly fail?
What's this? An extinguished civilization? Rekindled? That's right! Our quest doesn't end here! We'll press on! And we will find you! There. That's where you'll find me. Is that... another star? Of the stars we visited, most were already devoid of life. And where there was life still, the inhabitants wished for death. But even death, we learned, isn't truly the end. It is but a part of the cycle of rebirth. Souls return to the star, or in its absence, a larger flow, and eventually they are reborn. Alive again, to know suffering anew. True salvation lies not in dying. It lies in not being born. This is the gift I would give to you. To all life on beautiful Atheris. To that end, we created an egg wherein life cannot quicken. That dead sun. Attain it if you can, before your friend's emotions fade away, along with their protection. next part we'll go do those two quests over there and then speak with grahatia and press forward press over on so thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video consider liking commenting and or subscribing if you really enjoyed it consider supporting the channel all support really helps you keep being content like this and more you can find the links for that in the description along with links to me on social media so thank you again for watching and until next time this is Rainy MT signing on the Signing out. Bye. Apparently I forgot how to do my own outro. Bye.